everyone. Um, it's lovely to see you. Um, I've just made myself a little bigger so I can see what you can see, so I can't see everybody. But um, please, if anybody wants to ask any questions um, as we go along, um, please unmute yourself and ask anything. Hopefully I'll make it clear, but if there's something that you didn't understand or want to ask about, then, um, then please feel free to shout out. Um, it's better if you ask rather than in the chat because um, I sometimes don't see the chat pop up or I can't type while I'm cooking. But uh, it's lovely to see some faces that I know. Um, it's really nice to see you, Christine, uh, Chihiro and Caroline. It's really nice to see you again. Um, and uh, I, again, I can't see everybody, so if I've missed someone, I'm really sorry. Um, I just thought I'd uh, introduce myself a little bit before we start cooking. Uh, I studied at the school for three years. Um, I started about 12 years ago. Um, I did the foundation course um, and then just for my own kind of benefit and uh, interest and then I loved it so much and it resonated so much that I went on to do the full three years so that I could help other people because um, I felt like something I wanted to share and it really helped me. Uh, I have two of my own children and I live with my partner who's got three children um, so life's quite busy and I'm very um, used to kind of trying to juggle kitchen cooking everybody's different needs which sometimes I still don't manage but um, but uh, I'm, uh, I have a, a, a quite a strong knowledge in how to cook for children. I brought my children up um, using macrotics. Well, my second one, my first one, I wasn't, uh, when she was about three or four, I started doing it. Um, uh, and they do their own thing now. <laughs> so they, they eat all sorts of junk and I try and rein them in and bring them back a bit um, sometimes and, and suggest things. But, uh, but yeah, I've had to let them go on their own journey and hope they might come back to it at some point. But yeah, if anybody's got any questions about cooking and other situations, um, please shout out as well. Otherwise, we'll um, sit. Hi, I'm, yes. Sylvia. I'm Sylvia. Hi, oh, Sylvia. Hi. Um, I sort of um, really enjoy like the macrobiotic idea. Uh, what concerns me is that, uh, well, two things. The first thing is um, I read on Google News that they're saying that pickled foods um, are strongly giving stomach cancer. Um, and the second thing is that I've noticed that a lot of tamari or soya sauces, uh, mustards and that, they contain really high amounts of salt. Um, so because of my health, I'm a bit concerned. Um, comments, <laughs> please. Uh, yeah, so, um, so the pickled vegetables, I haven't, I'm afraid I haven't heard of them causing stomach cancer. Um, there's a huge variety of pickled vegetables. And um, when I recommend people go and buy them, it isn't from the supermarket. Because if you go and buy some pickled gherkins or beetroot from the supermarket, it is going to be full of sugar and, uh, and salt uh, to make it flavorsome and, and taste to a kind of a, a general kind of Western diet. Um, but uh, if you make your own pickled veg, uh, or if you ferment, ideally if you ferment your own vegetables, then I, I don't know if there's, the salt level is going to be particularly high in, in those, to be honest. Um, so there may be a differentiation there, I don't, I'm not aware of it. Um, and obviously it's always, um, macrobiotics, what's brilliant about macrobiotics is about balance. So yes, if you're eating a diet high in salt, it's not going to be great for you and shoyu and tamari are salty, as is miso, but they actually aren't as salty if you had to use the equivalent sea salt or normal table salt. So they're quite good at adding flavor without adding as much salt as you would need normally. So, um, and they also have other, other benefits. Um, so, but if you, uh, and that's what's good about macrobiotics, it isn't a one size fits all diet. It's what you need. And if your diet needs to be lower in salt for whatever reason or health reasons potentially, then there's ways of balancing that. And, and what the understanding is that you may need it slightly more yin or yang diet. Um, I missed whether Oliver was differentiated with that for you guys, but, um, but then you would look at your own personal health and, and eat slightly differently. So you may choose less of the shoyu and tamari seasonings and choose more other, other ways of um, uh, seasoning or making the food taste uh, with other ingredients. Does that help? Um, yes, it does. I mean, I'm just surprised if you start Googling um, herbs you've got in your cupboard or how, ma how many minerals and vitamins they have. If you start Googling? Um, herbs. 
a lot of herbs. herbs. Yes, they have so many properties in them. Yeah, um, I worked for Neil's Yard Remedies for 12 years, I think. So I'm very into my herbs um, and I see them as the next kind of level of healing as well after food. Um, and so I use herbs a lot. I like them in my cooking. I do use them. So again, if someone wasn't able to season um, or it wasn't appropriate for them to have it in their diet, then herbs were a great way of um, adding flavours. Um, I totally agree. Thank you. Anybody else got any questions before we start? Again, I can't see you all, so you will have to shout up. You can't just wave at me. Um, otherwise, um, we'll just get started and everyone just um, ask as we go along. Uh, and also, oh, so yeah, I've been teaching at the school. So as Jim say, I teach at the school, uh, the cooking teacher, and I also teach theory at the school. Um, and I've been doing that for about the last three or four years. Um, and I really enjoy it. And if you do come to the school, it's a great way of learning to cook. It's all very well listening to Oliver's theory, but without eating the food, it doesn't, it doesn't work. So you do need to, to be able to cook. And the courses at the school are so practically based that you go away learning how to make a wide range of recipes and also tailor it to your own health, which can be really useful. Uh, so let's get a little bit practical about this um, rather than just in theory. We're going to start with, I don't know if you've got your recipes in front of you, I actually couldn't print them out because my print is broken, but um, uh, hopefully it'll be okay. But we're going to start with the Canten because I want to try and get it to set. Um, I don't know if it will in the time that we have, but it's a great quick um, dessert. And it's called Canten, but it's basically a vegan jelly. So instead of using gelatin, it uses agar, which is uh, a seaweed uh, and is very useful for setting all sorts of different things. Um, and so I'm going to show you how to use it and then if you ever see it in a recipe for making something like a vegan cheesecake um, then you'll know you'll know how to use it. Uh, you need some apple juice so uh, we're not going to use any sweetener again which is really nice about this recipe that you don't need any of even the rice syrup or maple syrup any sweetness you can just use the sweetness from fruit. Uh, so I've got um, my apple juice here which I'm going to pour into a pan. And then I'm going to introduce you to agar. And what you, what the main thing you need to know about agar is that it comes in different forms. So you always, regardless of what the recipe says, you need to check the back of your packet of agar because it has different strengths. So one may say use a tablespoon and one may say use a teaspoon. So you really need to, to check because obviously if you use not enough, then it won't set at all. And if you use too much, it sets rock hard, which um, I just is okay, but isn't, I don't think it tastes very nice to eat. It's just not a very nice consistency. So you really need to read the back. So for this one, um, which is an Algamar brand, I don't know if any of you are familiar with that, a Spanish brand, um, you only need uh, to get a kind of creme caramel consistency, you need one heat teaspoon per liter. Whereas um, the Clear Spring brand, which is also a really nice one, um, you only need one teaspoon um, for 250 mils of liquid. So, and also this one needs to be soaked and then um, you don't boil it. Whereas this one, it asks you to boil it. Um, and then also this Terrasana one, is you mix with boiling water first and then add to your juice. So there's a, you know, depending on where you are and some of you too in other parts of the world or whatever your health food shop has or are available to you, just always read the packet um, before you start measuring. So I'm going to add, so the clear spring one you need to soak first, this one you don't. I think it's finer flakes or I'm not entirely sure how it works in production wise, but um, I'm going to add my agar. And I'm simply going to eat it. And what you need to do is to make sure that the flakes, so those are the kind of powdery flakes, they all need to be dissolved. And if they're not dissolved, again, it won't set. So it's quite important to make sure, use a spoon in your apple juice to make sure that it's all um, dissolved. I'm actually just going to put a lid on that to, to speed it up because we're in a little bit of a hurry. I wouldn't normally because you don't want to risk it boiling over, but just to try and speed things up. 
And then um, you can make a very simple canten um, by just using the apple juice and you can put a few um, berries into a glass and then you can pour the apple juice over it and then, and then you're good to go. Uh, my daughter was particularly fussy um, and didn't like having the bits of fruit in it. So, um, so I invented a way of um, making it more like a, a traditional jelly where you add the fruit, slightly soften it, and then we're gonna put it through a sieve. Uh, and then that makes a nice colored, very flavored um, jelly. Uh, which is, so either way is good. Um, experiment with your berries. So your recipe says strawberries and raspberries, which makes a very nice sweet um, uh, canten. I've rescued some <laughs> blueberries and black currants um, that are in my freezer from the summer uh, and that I need to use up. So um, I thought I'd use those um, today. It's gonna be a little bit more sour. So if you don't like the sour taste, then, um, then adding something like raspberries or strawberries, which are a little bit sweeter, uh, will be better for you. And then you will need a bowl or a jug with a sieve and a spoon. And we're going to add the berries once the agar has dissolved, just to soften them so that they'll go through the, um, they don't need cooking, so they'll go through the sieve. And then we're just going to pour it into our glasses and we're done. Has anyone made this before? I know some of you will have. Yes, so <laughs> very quiet. <laughs> I find when there's more than a few people and everyone's like, I'm not going to say anything, I don't think. And the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah, I know you're not going to know. And did you like it? I really like it. But I'm glad you mentioned about the agar because I'm always getting confused because one recipe says a tablespoon, one recipe says a teaspoon. And sometimes yeah. I've made it and it's gone rock solid and sometimes I've made it and it hasn't set. And, you know, uh, uh, things like that. So I'm glad you mentioned that actually it's the type of agar that you get, you know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's so really I didn't realise that. I thought it was just recipes. Huh. Yeah. Uh, my tip is if it sets rock solid and, and you don't want to eat it like that, put it back in a bowl or a pan, add some white almond butter and blend it and it will turn it into a mousse, which is really, really nice. You don't have to heat it again then. You just put it with the, oh. blend it with white almond butter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, just blend it with the white almond butter, which yeah. breaks it all down, makes it a bit richer. It's a slightly different thing. It's not quite a jelly. It's more of a kind of moussey yeah. consistency, yeah. but it's really delicious. Yeah, um, yeah. And then you can just bring that in. So yeah. There's, yeah, there's lots of things. You, unless you really, really burn something, you can normally rescue, <laughs> rescue yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. So that apple juice has come to the boil now. So you don't need to stir it too much, but you do want to check that the flakes don't stick to the to the bottom. And uh, and although this one says to boil it, I don't tend to boil mine too much. Sometimes if you boil it, especially if it's the clear spring one, don't boil it too much because you will um, it will also set rock solid. And also the more liquid evaporates um, from it while you're boiling it, then it will change that ratio of liquid to agar. And so then that will also change the, the setting ratio. Um, so I, I don't tend to boil mine to death for um, a long time, although it does say eight minutes on there. I've never found that it needed that. Uh, so this um, dessert is particularly nice. I know we're in the middle of January, but it's particularly nice for um, a summer's day. It's a, it's a slightly more cooling dessert, but also it's refreshing. So if you need something that I had a friend who was a chef and he used to say that he'd come home from working in the kitchen all evening, boiling hot and just a bit exhausted. And he'd have some canten in the fridge and then he would just have a little bit of that when he came home in the evening and he'd find it really relaxing and refreshing and, and um, help him feel a lot better. So uh, it's, uh, it's nice for that. Uh, it, you can also have fun with it. So we're just making one color today, but with my kids, I've made rainbow ones. So if you have children in your life, you can have fun and layer it. You just need to wait for, you don't need to wait for it to completely set, but you need to wait for it to form a little seal. And then you can pour the next color onto the edge of the glass where it's a bit more solid. And then you can make rainbow stripes, um, which is fun, just using different juices or different berries. 
Um, and also in your recipe, it's got a suggestion. We're not going to do it today. We haven't got time, but to make a custard. So it's almost like a jelly and custard um, to go on the top. And that creaminess with the jelly is, is a nice combination too. So let's just have a look and see how this is getting on. So I've still got a few flakes left in there, so I'm just going to leave it a little bit longer. Uh, and I'm also going to add a pinch of salt, which seems a little bit strange um, for a dessert, but the salt helps to bring out the sweetness and also helps to balance the kind of yin or sugariness of the um, energetically as well as um, kind of physically of the, of the sweetness. So a little pinch of salt in there. And often with macrobiotic desserts, you'll put a little pinch of salt in. And if you're worried about how your jelly is going to set, a really good um, tip is to just put a little bit on a spoon and put it in the fridge on a plate. And that will set. So when you have a whole amount in a glass, um, uh, it takes a longer time because obviously it's really hot. Uh, but if you've got a little bit of a spoon, it will set um, really um, quickly. Uh, and then you can tell. Um, I did make a whole batch when I was in my first year for a birthday party of mine. Um, <laughs> I didn't set, um, which was really upsetting. Um, I think I just got my upscaled it because I was doing it for a lot of people. Um, it was okay, it was still nice, but it just wasn't kind of properly set. So if I had done the spoon um, thing, then I would have known that it wasn't been set and I could have added um, a little bit more agar. So it's a good way of checking. So that is looking clear now. There's no flakes left. So I'm going to add my fruit. And just allow that to soften. There's a tray I have prepared earlier of glasses, and it's nice to use something pretty. So I've got these little tall glasses, which are quite nice, or just some leftover pots. Um, and when my children were little, I used to do really tiny ones um, for them when they were small and um, little small ones. So you know, using something nice can also just make it look that bit more special. So then I'm going to pour it through like this. And then use the back of a spoon to push the fruit through the sieve. And I know you can't smell, but it smells amazing now at this point. And I do grate something the other day and they they're not so much into their macrobiotic desserts anymore, but they still like the jelly and she ate something the other day and she said, oh, it tastes just like berries. It tastes just like your jelly mom. Give the bottom a scrape and then that will help any pulp come out. Through the sieve also means that you don't end up with lots of. I've, I have just tried blending it, um, but you end up with a lot of um, the seeds, um, and it doesn't, um, especially if you use strawberries or raspberries, so it doesn't taste well, the texture isn't quite so nice. So putting it through the sieve um, stops that, and you get a nice smooth dessert.
normally I would persevere a little bit more with that, but seeing as you're all watching and uh, I've got um, a few more things to do, I'm just going to leave it there. Just going to stir that in. And then it's much easier to pour into the glasses um, if you pop it into a jug. And then I'm going to find a spoon to pour a little bit on. Hopefully we might get, have time to see it's there. Hopefully you can see how quick it is. So although this you need to allow this at least a good hour to set properly to actually make it um it doesn't take this very long okay so i'm just going to quickly pop that in the fridge and see if i can help speed up the um and health and safety wise, I don't advise you put hot stuff in the fridge, but just for my um, uh, purposes tonight, I'm going to do that. Okay, does anyone have any questions? All straightforward. Uh, Lala. Yes. I made a content using uh, oat milk, but while nice. setting, it kind of separated. I'm I'm oh. not I'm not sure what I did wrong. Maybe did I boil too much? Or... In the pan, it separated. Uh, while setting. While it was setting. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't, yeah, I haven't had that happen to Hiro. Maybe um, something to do with the milk. Was it just normal oat milk from a carton? Or had you made it? Or uh, Normal um, oat milk from the store. Mm. And the ingredient was just oat, oat and water. Just two ingredients inside. Yeah, sounds good. Um, I, I'm sorry, I don't know, Jahira. I've not had it happen. Mm -hmm. uh, potentially boiling it could separate the kind of fat from the water. Mm -hmm. um, to, uh, it may have separated in that respect. Um, so maybe try not boiling it. And also, it's really nice. I've used rice milk as well to do it. And then you get a white layer and the red and white, red and white is really pretty. Um, so I have um, used other milk, a milk, plant milk to do it. Uh, but I haven't had it separate. Um, I'd maybe try again. Don't get put off. <laughs> maybe try with a different milk, but um, but don't be put off. It's quite nice with rice milk if you can have rice milk because it's um slightly naturally sweeter than the oat milk, uh, and you don't you you might not need to add any um uh, sweetener to it. Whereas the oat milk is quite um quite not savoury, but it doesn't have much sweetness to it. Um, so you could try with rice milk and see if that works. But uh, again, for some reason. Uh, less than the fruit, um, it will set really hard, the rice milk. It's, it's quite hard to get it to set to uh, a kind of a creamy kind of consistency. I don't, I don't know, again, don't know why that is. It must be some chemical kind of thing that I'm, I'm not aware of. But, um, but yeah, so don't overboil it. I find that overboiling the milk will also make it really, really solid. Thank you. Okay, no worries. <laughs> Hi, Sylvia again. Um, could you adapt this mess, um, recipe to make jam? Um, it, 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 it doesn't have enough sugar content to make jam. No, it would it would need. Um, uh, I think you can make kind of more sugar free jams, but you'd need some kind of. Uh, I think they use grape concentrate or apple concentrate and um, uh, something with a higher sugar content. Um, so no, it wouldn't it wouldn't make a jam or keep. Okay. Um, okay. Um, 
let's move on to our next recipe. So we're going to make um, some or roll some sushi together. Uh, my partner's going to be home any second, so hopefully we can make him a little snack um, for when he gets in. Uh, has anyone rolled sushi before? Yeah. Yeah. Few of you nodding, but I can see a couple of you nodding, but I don't know about the rest of you. <laughs> um, it's a great, it's just a great thing, um, really. Um, and it's really popular now, isn't it? So my kids used to take it to school with them when they were like four and five in their packed lunch. And everyone else had sandwiches and crisps, <laughs> chocolate bar. And, uh, and she used to swap her sushi. So her friends would be like, ooh, so excited that she had sushi. And she would swap it for things like pepperoni. <laughs> just really disheartening anyway um so it has grown in popularity and lots of people but if you buy it or go out to eat it generally it's with white rice and the white rice is seasoned with um sugar uh or a kind of glucose syrup um which is not traditional but um obviously quite tasty um and uh and has become used and probably is a lot cheaper uh so it's really great to be able to make your own it's um it became my when i became macrobiotic and i stopped eating so much bread i've been I eating a lot of bread and i wanted to reduce the amount of bread i still eat bread but i wanted to reduce that ratio it became my kind of go-to sandwich uh, so instead of having a sandwich i would have sushi and sometimes i'd roll it up and just take it in the roll in the in the mat and then i would just cut it at work and, and that would be my sandwich so you can put all sorts of fillings in it as well. So you can choose as an infinite variety of what you might like or what's seasonal and available. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a great thing to know how to do. You will need, um, you will need one of these. You can do it without, but it makes it a lot easier. A sushi mat, which is only a couple of pounds. Um, some nori, which is a seaweed, which is great for you. So when my daughter wouldn't eat her vegetables, I'd try and get her to eat some nori because it's full of vitamins and minerals. And so I have paired earlier uh, some short grain brown rice, uh, which I've pressure cooked, and that um, gives it a little bit of stickiness, which helps the rice stick together. If you don't have a pressure cooker, you can still do this, um, but just slightly cook the rice for longer so it has a little more stickiness or softness to it, and then it will stick together a little bit better. Or if you want to, you can buy clear spring do. Um, short grain brown rice sushi rice which you can just cook in a pan and will stick together um, uh, nicely as well it's a lot more expensive so just buying some cheap short grain brown rice and cooking it yourself is is cheaper then sushi actually means i think chihiro again correct me if i'm wrong um it is sour or about being sour uh so i think people think that it's it's just the general term for um uh like what we understand as sushi, but I think that actually literally means, and the sourness is the vinegared rice. So once your rice is cooked, you need to season it. Um, I used to use um, some mirin and rice vinegar. Um, Clear Spring have just brought out um, a sushi rice seasoning, so it's mixed together. So you can try using that, or you can use um, mirin, which is like a, uh, a sweet vinegar, and Japanese vinegar or rice mirin. Um, don't use um, malt vinegar or anything like that. This is too strong. At a push, you could maybe use some cider vinegar, but it's very strong, so just use a little less. Uh, um, and if you don't have anything or can't do anything, then just make it without. It's still good. <laughs> um, do, you, do you put um, brown rice vinegar in it? Yes. So either the sushi seasoning or brown rice vinegar and mirin. Um, well, equal um, quantities, equal quantities of brown yeah, rice. Yeah, and, and again, if I don't have mirin, then I'll just use brown rice vinegar. Um, yeah. It's quite nice to have either um, a bit of both. I've not and got both, so if you just do equal quantities of both on it, that works, does it? Yes. You don't so, need you don't need any uh, maple syrup. You don't need any sweetener then. No, no, definitely not. No, no. Um, uh, and I used a cup of rice and i think it was two tablespoons of seasoning for the cup of rice roughly okay uh, and and you just sprinkle it on and then stir it through so to make sure that it's all coated evenly and then what's also useful to do before you start rolling your sushi is to prepare your fillings 
um, so I've already cut some bits up here. Um, so I've got some spring onion, some cucumber, and some carrot. The carrot I've um, blanched or steamed, so it's um, a bit softer. Because if you have a big piece of carrot and you bite into it and it's quite chewy or, or crunchy, then it, it doesn't feel quite nice. So it's really nice to, to slightly soften it uh, to put in. Other things you can put in, um, so if you wanted some protein in there, you could put some tofu or tempeh that you'd marinated or pan fried in or some uh, already, see, you know, that you can buy tofu that's already flavoured in the health food shop now. Uh, and that adds some protein. So if you wanted it, was if like I was taking it from a sandwich and I wanted protein in it, I would put tofu as well as some either the vegetables that you put in. Um, and then you can flavour it as well. So traditionally you would have a dipping sauce. But occasionally it was too tricky to take a dipping sauce with me. So then I would put some flavoring in. So something like tahini sometimes is really nice. Mustard, good quality mustard. Um, uh, wasabi, obviously, sometimes. Going. So you could put a sprinkle of wasabi in there if you wanted to. Um, I'm going to use some umeboshi paste today, which is um, uh, a macrobiotic or Japanese ingredient, which has a nice kind of umami sour, salty taste, um, which is great, add some flavor. Uh, smoked salmon, I think is suggested in your recipe. Um, avocado, if you like it, um, you know, feel ethical enough to eat it. Um, anyone else got any suggestions that they like in their sushi? So to, to make your sushi, you need to evenly spread it over your nori and you need to leave a little area at the top so that you can roll it in and my top tip is if you haven't done this before is not to put too much rice and filling in it's a lot harder to roll um, when you've got a lot of filling there we can't so, quite see what you're doing because the camera's cutting it off just there. Oh, okay sorry i can see it is that better yeah that's better. yeah thank you So now I will fit as much as I can in and roll it up. But if you're if you're doing it for the first time, just put a little bit in. So can everyone see? You've got like an even coating with a, a little bit left here. This is the uh, umeboshi paste that I'm just going to put a little bit down the middle. Quite a strong flavour. And then you just want to put your filling down the middle of your nori sheet. And I'm showing you how I'm doing it. I'm not a, <laughs> a sushi chef or any, I wouldn't want to, to like, pretend that I had any kind of official training, but this is how I get away with doing it. So there is, uh, so I've got the carrot, cucumber, spring onion, and the umeboshi. And then it's useful if you've got a little bit of water or a pastry brush, um, and then just put a very light um, sprinkling of water along that top edge. And then you're going to use your mat. Can everybody see? Okay. So then you're going to use your mat to lift up this part up and over the middle part um, of your. And I use one hand to roll and one hand to pull in a minute. So I lift it up and over. And then you can start rolling. This hand pulls the um, mat forward and this hand rolls and slightly squeezes over. And then you keep kind of gently, you can give it a little bit of a squeeze as you go along. And then keep pulling and rolling until you get to the end. And then you can turn it over and then give it a really nice squeeze to hold it all together. And then hopefully when you open it out, you have a nice roll of sushi. 
Give me a little end bit in there. And as I said, I would keep it like that to keep it fresh. Just take it like that with an elastic band, pop it in my bag and then cut it. Because um, obviously once you cut it, it starts to dry out a little bit. So we'll just do one more and then just pop it to one side to leave it to, to firm up. If you cut it straight away, then it can be a little bit um, tricky as well. So I'm just going to leave it to firm up. Anybody got any questions? That's good, must be really clear. And it's also fun like to make for friends or I've got together and taught friends how to do it and have like a meal and made your own sushi. I'm not going to put the umi in this one because I can't remember whether my partner actually likes it or not. So, just in case. Okay, so one more time. So, lift it up. And I kind of sometimes, to make it easier, just tuck the filling in with my fingers and then it holds it in place um, and then you can roll. I'm doing that kind of slowly so you can see the kind of process, but once you've got the hang of it, you can just quickly kind of roll it up. And we're done. So I made a little dipping sauce earlier, uh, which I used some shoyu um, and water and mirin. Uh, another addition that's nice is a little bit of ginger juice sometimes if you haven't got pickled ginger to serve with your sushi. Uh, and I put equal parts of water and shoyu and then a half um, of the mirin. Uh, and then I've got a little nice um, bowl there that you can put your sushi around. I would normally leave it a little bit longer, but let's just cut it so we can see. It's great if you can have a sharp knife. The end one is okay, but sometimes that's the one that you eat um, while you go along because it doesn't always hold together. I noticed that you've got um, pesto as one of the ingredients. Do you normally, do you sometimes use that instead of the umeboshi paste? Yeah, so that would be salty, so you wouldn't add the umi and, um, and the pesto, yeah. yeah. And if you want to make it look really nice, you could decorate it with some black sesame seeds. So nice sprinkled on the top, the color combination. And if you're doing it for a few times, clean your knife, because having a clean knife um, so the rice isn't on it, uh, this makes it easier. And there you go. I'm just gonna um, ask my partner if he wants it, because he's just coming from work, and then we'll make our next, uh, next one. Rich, did you want some sushi? Rich? He's run away, didn't want to disturb. Okay. So our last one is going to be hot, which is why I've saved it to last. And it's scrambled tofu, which is great for um, a quick meal or it's a nice alternative breakfast. So. I don't know if any of you are familiar, but a traditional macrobiotic breakfast is often some miso soup or grain porridge and some vegetables or beans. Um, so it's nice to have something different. Um, so some scrambled tofu on bread. Uh, it's kind of almost like an equivalent to scrambled egg. 
also you will need some firm tofu so sometimes people will say to me that they bought the um, tofu from the supermarket on the shelf in the tetra packs and you can do it with that but it's a little bit more tricky and it'll make it um, quite wet which is the silken tofu but this is the firm tofu that you need to buy from the fridge uh, and it comes in water so you do need to squeeze a little bit of the water out and you can either do that by wrapping it up in a clean tea towel or paper towel or sometimes you can get away with just especially if you're going to crumble it just giving it a little squeeze with your hands to get any excess water out There we go. And then you're going to just crumble it into pieces. I quite like mine fine, but you can leave slightly bigger pieces if you want. I'm just going to crumble it almost into a breadcrumb consistency. And tofu like this on its own is, is pretty plain. And if people eat it like this, then they're like, oh, I don't, I don't like tofu, which is a shame because it can be a really great, quick and versatile and nutritious um, food source. So then you've got your bowl of crumbled tofu. And then we're going to prepare the veg that we're going to use. We're going to use some carrot and leek. Um, the carrot I'm going to grate finely on a mandolin grater, but you could use a normal grater. And then some leek, which um, I've already halved and washed. And we're going to quarter and slice very finely. And we're going to season with some shoyu and some mirin. And you need a frying pan. So ideally, like a nice cast iron or non, not a non-stick one with um, a coating on it. I'm gonna... uh, in your recipe, it says sesame oil. I don't have any sesame oil at the moment, so I'm going to use some olive oil, but you can use sesame oil. It's really nice, especially in the winter, slightly more yang oil. And we're going to start by sauteing our vegetables and then we'll add the tofu, add some seasoning and then serve it straight away while it's hot. We're going to use a pinch of turmeric um, just to give it some colour and I guess it makes it look a tiny little bit more like scrambled eggs. Thank you. 
So we just want to soften. Don't overdo it on your turmeric because it can make it slightly bitter if you add too much. And then we can add the tofu. And just a little sprinkling of the turmeric to colour. I'm going to turn the heat down slightly and add the shoyu and the mirror. And then it's always good to taste before you serve your food. Just to check that you've got the seasoning right. Yeah, it was really nice. And then I've got some, I haven't tasted it, but I've got some lovely sourdough bread, which you could toast all steam. So if you have trouble digesting your bread or it feels too hard then try steaming your bread with a without the lid on the steamer and that will soften and add some moisture to the bread and it can be easier to eat and then you can garnish that i've got some chopped spring onion here is really nice on it or some parsley if you have some fresh parsley something green or serve it with some steamed greens for breakfast sometimes i do this if you're having like an alternative breakfast and do some mushrooms that i've cooked in some oatly and lemon juice and parsley We'll have all sorts of different things on the plate. Uh, but there is your scrambled tofu and bread. Leave that. Let's see that. Let's have another steam. Anyone got any questions about that one? No? <laughs> okay. Well, I don't think it's going to be set because we haven't had quite enough time. Um, but I'm going to go and check the canton and show you. So my glasses are still looking pretty wobbly, but the spoon that I suggested to you to check is nice and set. Um, so that is a great way of knowing that eventually they will sit and you don't have to worry that it gets to your dinner party and it's um, not gone. So yeah, sorry um, about eating food in front of you, um, but hopefully that was um, helpful and you've all had dinner and aren't starving now. <laughs> um, does anyone have any questions about the school or in general um, uh, that I might be able to help them with? Um, I've, I've just got one question. I don't know whether you'd know the answer to this. On the on the two day plant based weekend, would that be some of the same recipes that I'd already done when I came to the five day looking after your health weekend five days? Would it be or would it be different recipes? um i'm trying to think i i write i write that course um and so because it's a plant-based course it's quite heavy on um introducing different plant-based proteins because that's often what people kind of aren't used to what the, um, the two-day courses the two-day two plant-based weekend yeah, 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 so yeah. It's kind of like about plant-based eating so obviously yeah. um eating plant-based proteins is a big part of that rather than eating meat or dairy for your yeah. protein or tempeh and stuff you mean and tempeh so beans tempeh all of those kind of things and what you can do with them yeah um, to be tasty and um interesting 
uh, so I, it won't be, they won't be exactly the same, but I can't guarantee yet that it won't have one or two maybe from that. But I don't know if you came on the course, whether you'd have cooked everything on that course in the, um, in the looking after health. Uh, well, no, we, we, we would have just done, you know, our... Your thing, yeah. What we did as a pair, you know. Yeah, and so if there was something, because again, that works how it would work when you came on the weekend. So if there's something that you'd already done and you'd like to do something else, then you just need to let me know. Um, and then oh, I can make, okay. sure, yeah, yeah, I get it. And make yeah. sure that you get something that's going to be relevant to you. Yeah. That, yeah, or that I haven't done before, yeah. Okay. Does that sound okay? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Are you going to have a dessert online course this year? Ah, I don't know. I don't know if we are, Jihiro. <laughs> okay. I haven't been able to fit it in. We're doing the level one and level two again, and I haven't, um, we haven't fitted one in yet. <laughs> Okay. What I might do is um I might try and we might try and do just a day. I don't know if that would work for you. Maybe when we just did a day and we did a morning and an afternoon of making um desserts or cakes and things like that. Um, because I think I haven't got enough space to do a whole another five week um course. But maybe we we could do a day cooking together and maybe if you everyone prepared a packed lunch and um, we could do an online um because, yeah, it's really I'd be interested one of the things I'm really passionate about because it's quite hard to make, you know, when I first started, it was quite hard to make desserts that didn't have dairy or sugar in. I didn't know how to make a cake without any dairy or sugar. Um, so, yeah, it's something, and especially having children who want to eat sweet foods, um, it's something that I've been um, playing around with for quite a few years now. So I feel I want other people to en enjoy that and, and enjoy some sweetness without it being um, particularly too harmful and using lots of refined sugar. But thanks for bringing it up and I will make sure that I try and make some space to hear it. That'd be lovely to do that with you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, any anybody else? I'm trying to see if I can see you all. Well, I, I would be interested in a, if it was a one day course uh, for, for puddings online. Okay. Who, who was that you, Caroline? Great. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. That's good to know. Yeah. Yeah, because I ran a five week one um, last year and we did different things each uh, morning, um, but maybe I'll just try and put a few things together that we could do um, in a day. So. Mm. Okay. Well, I hope you uh, help, that helped and you found it informative and um, maybe inspired you to go and cook some new things or try something different or maybe come and see us at the school. It was very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, welcome. Go well, everybody.